I can't get over Saz's idle poses here. He just like <laughs> he's just like, huh. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and he has another pose where it's like Hmm. I wonder what I should do when Dodge wakes up. <laughs> should we go to the chocobos again? I I thought he was like crossing his hands or his arms, just like I did not sign up for this. <laughs> Anyways, hey everybody, Mr. Bright Guy here for pro or possibly the final session of Final Fantasy XIII for the PS3. Last time where we left off, we were at Eden, and every I do believe all of Psycom and the cavalry have just turned themselves into Seath, like all these guys over here. So. Not only you get, not only you get turned into a crystal looking monster thing, you also get to wear a skirt. It's pretty comfy when it's crystal. I was looking at some other like seeth that almost look like that and they look like um or actually they're called vamp oh shit. They were called like vampires and stuff. And I and they too also have like skirts and everything. It was pretty wicked. But anyways, I'm going to go through Orphan's Cradle. I did go back to do something, though, to grab a prize, and I think you have it unlocked after Chapter 12, I think. Or as soon as you get to the Orba Village, where Fang and Home, or Fang and Vanilla's home was. There was actually a little robot in one of the houses, which is actually Fang and Vanilla's home. His name is called Bhakti, and what you had to do was, like, find five spare parts to fix him up. And I, I guess I should have showcased this before going to Orphan's Cradle. But he actually gives you some really incredible prizes here, if I can find them. Uh, actually, these are key items. They, uh, they give you three, or he gives you... Three platinum ingots, one gold nuggets, a couple of a uh, couple of components. I think I think it was an analog circuit or something like that. Um, oh yeah, and uh, ten deceptive souls here. That was the one I wanted to look after to fix them up because at this point in the game, through Orphan's Cradle, these guys are actually no fucking joke. And yes, I did play the game even further a second time, and I did beat the game. But, well, I guess it's not a blind game anymore. Sorry, guys. But, these enemies are actually no joke here, so it's best to just avoid them for now. Even though that, uh... Even though they actually do drop like an item that sells really well like at least 12,000 Jill but they actually cast death so it's best to just avoid that for now unless you want to get even stronger yeah it, it's best to just avoid that for now so I'm gonna do the best I can to go through this cradle this the this looks nowhere near exactly like a cradle. Yeah, and the, even these guys are no joke too. They're the chicken-like dudes. Yeah, those guys are like no joke because if there's at least like let's say two or three, most likely three, they have this move called rush. And they just literally like trip you over and real, like, really ignore your next attacks and stuff. Actually, did I just go the wrong way? Oh no, I didn't. Or did I? <laughs> or did I? Yeah, I probably went the wrong way. Um, yeah, these uh, Seath here cast death. The other guys cast like rush attack. 
And there are actually, like, other Seath monsters that come up that are also no joke. Which, which probably means that, uh, this is really, like, the final level of the game. Uh, okay, I guess it was supposed to go down. Silly me. <laughs> Silly girl. Oh yeah, wasn't wasn't I even supposed to continue on with the story? Yeah, like was I supposed to continue on with the story even further? Whoa. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I could fight them if I want to. You can see how much bullshit it is right here. And it looks like that power spritz just automatically gave them, like, haste up, and it looks like physical resistance up. And it looks like water resistance up? I seen like a water drop and it and it looks like veil right here, so <laughs> this rust attack is no joke, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. But if you ever do get stronger after or like in the post game, you can definitely like you can definitely like try again over here. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But yeah, wasn't I actually supposed to continue the story of this game, like, in the next recording session? Whoa. Okay. I mean, wh where did I even left off at that point? Like, I was at Palimpolum. And... Well, I guess I could say, like, long story short. The... I think it's the Psycom tried to attack them. Wait, hang on. I think something... Oh, no, 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 wait. A next piece of the puzzle happens. So, I think it's the Psycom that it tried to attack us. And the four of us... Yeah, the four of those guys settled their differences after letting out their anger and hatred. Especially Lightning and Hope. Like, Hope just went from like, okay, I fucking said it. I thought I was supposed to kill Snow, but we both have a common enemy in our hands, which is the Psycom, so I'm braver enough to face my dad. And that's what happened, like, he he told his dad that um, Nor is gone, and I guess actually, what's his name? Bartholomew? Yeah. He, he took it after a few seconds, like, he was bawling and shit, and then he was like, Come on, damn it, you're my son! You, be you belong here in Palimpolum, even if you are a Lysith. Or even if you are a Lysi. Looks like there's two way- oh, no, 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 wait. Okay. I'm just trying to remember here. That's the way to an item, and this guy is also no joke. See how fast he came up to me from behind? Actually, I think I can take him on. He's only just one guy. This is a Sanctum Templar. Yeah, I think I can actually take him on. If I'm lucky enough. I... I have Calm Rav and Sab right now. Yeah, we just immediately staggered him. So, let's go all out on him. See? Uh, as soon as you stagger him, it's... It's literally a cakewalk. If, I, if only I knew that sooner... Like, last time I played this. And I could say that. I could definitely, like, say that. As the truth, like. I have beaten this game, like, last night after... 
the last recording session. Actually, what should I have as the next paradigm? I think it was this one. Because there are bosses around here, too. And also, even Lightning has settled her differences besides Snow. And actually, like, like realizing that, uh, uh, how should I put it? Oh, right, this guy. So these, yeah, these, these guys actually look familiar. These are the two beasts that showed up at, um, that sunny meadow thing where Saz and Vanille walked across. But this time, these guys look different. They're bigger, and their names are Jabberwocky and Bandersnatch. Yeah, Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky. I guess at that point, they gave up of names. Now, uh-oh. Better, <laughs> better keep up with the meds, Vanille. This was actually an interesting boss, too, because one guy actually takes away the other guy's health away just to get more power. Because, like, when we took down the... When we took down the Banner Snatch... Or I think it was the... No, we took down the Jabberwocky. And then when we get to the... When we got to the Banner Snatch, he was already at, like one quarter of his health or he was already at like three quarters of his health so or I think it was the other I think it was the other guy around but they actually like have been sucking the life out of each other here let's let's try this guy I'm, I'm just trying to remember which one sucks the life out of each other But yeah, lightning. Yeah, see what I mean? I went to tell a story. I got interrupted by a boss. Whoop de freaking do. I, I just have to fucking deal with it with this commentary. Like, I say one thing and it goes to the next when something pops up on screen. I just didn't want to have to stop in my tracks just to finish my story and then continue on my journey. There's no way that I would want to do that. Especially in an RPG like this. Or is it even a JRPG or an RPG? Because it's a Final Fantasy. I would say Maple Story is like a JRPG. It looks like it blocks itself from damage. It's resistant to magic, and it's immune to physical. Okay. But wait, we are actually taking damage to him. Let's just hope this guy doesn't revive his teammate. There was like, there was like some sort of boss battle where he had to kill both of them at the same time. And I forget which game that was. But yeah. At Palimpolum, everybody settled their differences. And I think, like, Lightning finally believes about Snow's beliefs about Sarah. And, like, Sarah was right the whole time and stuff. So then... They decide to work together to take down Psycom. And that big battleship came in and we took that down. And then what happened next? Oh, right, the cavalry. They took us... Uh, yeah, they took us in. Yeah, they... They were the ones that helped with the ambush. 
I'm gonna have to go to diversity. Yeah. They were the ones that helped out with the ambush. And I think it was that cutscene where we thought Yag Roche was killed. But I guess he was just plain shot. Um So the cavalry took us yeah, cavalry took us in. Oh and that's right, we went to the Nautilus and we found out about the truth about the relationship between Vanille and Dodge. And I think I think that was actually explained in the story here. Yeah, here we go. Almost done with this banner snatch. Let's see. No, this is like way before. Have to go after Palimpolum here. Hey, we did it! That was not too bad. Yeah, these boss battles through Orphan's Cradle are not actually that hard. If you're strong enough. Um... Hope is attacked by Psycom Warmech. <laughs> well, the party is busy formulating a plan to deal with... Wait, hang on. Uh... Yeah, I guess that was it. And dangerous. Ugh. I felt that. Okay, I looked it up here. While the party is busy formulating a plan to deal with the Sanctum, Psycom Officer Yag Roche arrives with the troops. Snow tries to make them realize they wish to protect Coon or Cocoon, and demands the purge to be stopped. Also, I think I. Nah. I know that cutscene was important. Uh, Snow tries to make them realize they wish to protect Cocoon and demands the purge to be stopped. As Palimpolum is now also being purged due to them being discovered there. Yogg claims the lives of Pulseless Sea are not worth the risk of sparring and that the purge is demanded by the people of Cocoon. After a confrontation with an attack shuttle, the group are rescued by Rygdea and taken aboard the Lindblum with help from Sid. Saz and Vanilla arrive at the Nautilus. Yada da. Pompa Sancta Parade, a dramatic reenactment of the War of Transgression. Tired of running, Saz decides to turn himself in for a chance to s of seeing his son one last time. Vanilla protests and is about to reveal the truth about the Urite incident when. Boobs McGee, Jill Nabbit, Psycom Supreme Commander, arrives with a Psycom platoon and Dodge, who has been kept in Psycom custody to discern his focus. Uh, upon reuniting with Sez, Dodge turns to Crystal and his focus is revealed to be the capture of Pulse of Sea. Hmm. Oh, okay, the capture of Saz and Vanille. Jill shows secretly footage from Uride Gorge and reveals the truth behind the incident. Dodge's transformation into a Lassie was the result of Vanille and Fang's threat towards Kujada that had turned the nearest person, Dodge, into a Lassie to protect itself. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's, wh that's why Dodge became a Sanctum Lassie. So we're, yeah, so we're here with the next part here. I was trying to figure out what that thing is. It looks much like a door here, but it's being blocked by this guy here. 
Which I'm pretty sure you don't want to face just yet either. I mean, I could see for myself here what this guy really is. Oh. Excuse me. This is. Oh, wait a Okay. This is an immortal. I mean, I could try it on. But this is called an immortal. And I think it's much more stronger than a, than a tyrant. Yeah, see how, see how much damage that did? Well, actually, wasn't that just like from one slice? Ugh. I mean, I could take this guy on. I just have to take care of the sword. Come on, give some stuff to Vanille! Oh my god. Never mind. I think that sh I think that sword just one shotted. Yeah, come on, <laughs> give give her some stuff. Give her some stuff, please. I'm just trying really hard to buff everybody. In fact, I should be I should be manually looking for these buff ups instead of just doing auto. All right, let's see. Let's see how this goes. I have to take down the sword first. Wait, who is... Okay, I thought Fang was taking care of the other guy. And it looks like, yeah, it's doing pretty good damage. It's already down. Okay, I, I guess Saboteur really fucking helps. You can see it has like... Oh, it well, it did have magic resistance down. But it also has physical resistance down and... Stuff like that. Oh, so that's what it was. It was called Electrocute. That did like... That did like, uh... Half the damage with, uh... Electric and shield resistance from it without all the buffs up. That's why it... <laughs> that's why it auto-killed Vanille. Alright, go in commando. <laughs> and now it's up in the air. Wait, hang on. I should be using Blitz. Oh, look at that damage go. There we go. Okay, so... I take that back. You can... You can try and take on the Immortal. But still, this, uh... Actually... Let's check it out. I have never actually been here before. And I thought this would actually take you to, like... Oh. Where are we? Oh, wait, it said, like, the upper level here. <clears throat> Weirding Glyph. And then what's this over here? Adam and Bangle. Oh, that's interesting. Adam and Bangle. That's 800 health. What the hell? That's probably like the best one there is. 
I should have that. I should have that in my grasp. In fact, I can't even transfer. <laughs> 